I want to thank everybody for being a part of my life, and I want to let you know that I have some uh, new tour dates. Um, I am going to be uh, Los Angeles, May 7th. We added a show there at the Wiltern. Uh, Albuquerque, May 18th. Midland, Texas, May 19th. Lubbock, May 20th. And May 21, Dallas, Texas, we've added another show there. So get your friend or somebody. Get somebody you love and bring them. Grab somebody by the hand and say, hey, babe, we're going to go get involved in something good. We also have Savannah, Georgia, June 2nd. Augusta, Georgia, June 3rd. And Montgomery, Alabama, June 4th. As well as Columbus, Georgia, June 5. And some new dates down in Florida. We have June 23rd in Hollywood, Florida. June 24, Fort Myers, Florida, down there, military area, I'm guessing. And June 2 5 over in Daytona Beach, Florida. If you come over there, bring them sunburnt titties out with you. And bring that skin cancer with you, baby, in Daytona. Everybody out there smoking on them door aisles and huffing on Winston's. You'll see a newborn come out and he got his uh he'll have a little lighter in his hand. Hunting a door owl. That's Daytona Beach, Florida, June 2 5. June 2 6 down there in Lakeland, Florida. I appreciate all you guys' love and support. Um, tickets are on sale now at theovon.com slash T O U R. That's theovon.com slash tour. And um, yeah, I'm just grateful for you guys. Thank you so much. We have the new Gang Gang hoodies and coffee mugs available. Along with the Rat King t-shirt and that bobble head, that bee head, baby, if you need some head, borrow mine. Check that out and more at TheoVonStore.com. Today's guest is the star of uh, many films um, and television series. Uh, he's a friend of mine. And, um, yeah, I can't even believe I get to be his friend. It's just been an, an, it, that's been very exciting and uh, inspiring. Um, he is a hero to many. He's, um, a, a comedy legend. He, uh, is part of the fly on the wall podcast with Dana Carvey. You can check that out. And he also has a new Netflix special called nothing personal. Uh, very happy to be sitting here with David Spade. Oh, I definitely have OCD. When I think about growing up, I used to think that there was like boogeyman's, you know? So yeah. I would like, I'd have to open the closet and like look up, look at this corner, that corner, <laughs> that corner. Why are we going? Please say you're rolling. Like just, I was in just severe, dude, this is the thing. We actually had a question that came in, put it, this is perfect timing. Why don't you get that up? Who are these hotties? Hey, Theo. Hey, David. <laughs> Which one of you two would win in a fight? Oh, is this even a tough question? <laughs> I don't know. I think you could win, man. No, listen. The only chance I have at anybody is if all my anger for my dad leaving me comes out at once. <laughs> because it's fucking percolating in there, believe me. And really? I, get, I get fucked with all the time. Always been fucked with as a kid. Always been. That's why I felt bad for Chris Rock. I go, he was always picked on. And you, you grow up like that. And then when I'm on dates, people see a pretty girl and they go, oh, he's with, oh, he's with this fucking guy? So I've had him step right between us and start going, hey, talking. Oh. And I'm like, "I'm." she has a date. And they're like, who, fuck you? And then I go, oh. And even a girl sometimes goes, hey, come on, I'm with somebody. And they go, come on, baby. And so it's humiliating because they, they know I probably won't fight. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. And they're 100% right. So I but just unless you had that one power right. pop. And so I even told Glazer, I see any of these UFC guys, I go, just if it goes down, where do I start? So obviously I'm going to lose. But where do I start? You want a good So shot. I get something and then they at least go, oh, this little fucking pussy at least hit me. Yeah. <laughs> because my brother used to beat the shit out of me and hold me down. And it was oh. there's so much anger and rage. But long story short, you'd win. But we would never fight. And um, you got a cool shirt on today. 
We would never fight. Thank you, man. You're not fighting a guy that gives you these compliments. I appreciate it. That's a great call. That's a great Where point. did you get? That's a good shirt. Dude, Sugar Sean gave us these. We saw his fight, man. Remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. We went to the UFC fight. Yeah. Everyone loves we're walking around there and Theo's like this. Everyone's like, Rat King, squeak, squeak. He's like, <laughs> whatever Just you Just throwing cheese yeah, in Yeah, you're like this. You kind of you, you kind of walk sit, like this. You get to sit by Halle Berry, which is oh, that's definitely. right. Shit, I, we haven't even talked about that. That was next level. Halle dude. Berry was so nice and so fun. Yeah. I know we're barely, but you know when you sit right next to him, uh, you you have to talk to him. Yeah, and I have to go. Who's this guy? You yeah. know, I I do fake questions. I know what's going on. Yeah, but I go. Do you think they're gonna wind up scrapping? And she's like. In the main event, yeah, I think yeah. they're going to eventually hit each yeah. other. I go, good, good, good. Oh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you'll just ask chick stuff just to get, just, just to like. Just have my answer. Yeah. Or you make them sound smart. I go, oh, yeah, you know a lot. She yeah. goes, Are the fighter's going to fight? Yeah. And I go, ooh, someone's been here before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you eat dinner in the evening. <laughs> just yeah. easy stuff. And then something happened. I think we spilled a drink or something happened. But we're right there. And then remember Jared Leto talked to you? Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, at first I was like, damn, that chick's fine as fuck. Then I'm like, oh, that's Jared Leto. Yeah, and he's still fine, yeah. And he's still pretty good yeah. looking, man. Jesus, Yeah, dude. we stumbled him to him. We were on the on the way to the back to try to go to just get some food or something. There's a back room, and uh, he was just sitting outside. And, uh, yeah. But Remember? That was he fun was talking to He was sitting outside like a alone. raven. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was like up on a... Now we're more. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And then we walked by and we're like, is that a purse? Yeah. We're like, damn. <laughs> is that thing on a. I thought he flew away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then he flew away. But off. he goes, hey, dudes. And then he said he's, uh, he was very nice. Yeah. And then he said, he, did he live somewhere near you or something? He's from Louisiana. Okay. So That's he chatted I was about like, that. Oh, I'm out on this one. You're like, oh, I'm from Arizona. I'm, I'm like, done. I heard it rains hard there. Almost. I'm from I, Sheriff Joe country. I go, one time, uh, we were all at a scorpion convention in Arizona. I'm going, like, who cares? I, go, mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of interesting. I had a bolo tie with a scorpion in it. Remember I told you the other day, I go, put a bolo tie with a scorpion, scorpion in, in it. it. Yeah. And they have those. Yeah. AZ -A all the way. So well, we were at the fight. We had a good time. We saw yeah. Dana. We saw Dana. We oh, yeah. We sat right behind sat Dana. Dana White, and he would tell us what's going on. Yeah. It was fun. He'd be like, hey, get out your blood cups on this one. You're going to get us. <laughs> You're like, it's, yeah. it's, big. it's like being at a Gallagher show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one time he like even had some blood on his hand, and he rubbed it on my gums. He goes, you want a gummer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, this will help a little vitamin O. It is. They go, all right, put on your blood rain coats like Gallagher, <laughs> and they smash the guy's head. Ooh. Yeah. I think Rogan, was he at that one or not? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. there. So that was a wild one, man. That was a good one. There were some comics repping. Yeah, it's fun, but a lot of people knew you. It doesn't shock me, but it is that is sort of your crowd, though. Who is it? You mean like ruffians or like yeah. UFC people? Yeah, yeah. We've had a decent amount of UFC guys that have been on here. Actually, there's a picture of Dustin Diamond Poirier right there. Somebody made us. Oh yeah, well, you know it was fun is seeing him in the back just walking around. Yeah. Oh, and we saw. Remember who uh, who was there? Uh, oh yeah, remember right when we walked in, Dustin came over and said, "What's up?" To oh us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. All those guys are very cool. That was and, cool. Uh, I was like, like, "Knock him out!" And he's like, "Uh." -uh. Oh, but then remember he didn't he lose? He didn't win. He lost. He came in second. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or it was a <laughs> that was hard for you to say, and it was hard. It was hard for all of us. But the hard one B. He came in one B. He was. Uh, he almost won. He almost. There you go. He almost won. He almost and won. Uh, it was tight. And then uh, yeah, he's, he's a such a kill. fuck. His mitts are so oh, huge. He shakes hands. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. So then he's. We see him, and we remember we we're like, should we say something? Because you don't want to look like an asshole. Like I don't want to talk to you because you lost, but we want to say hi. But you know, sometimes it's like if you have a bad set, you don't want people coming up and giving you fake compliments yeah. and shit. But he was he was pretty cool. He and he's always really affable, you know, real super nice and stuff. He was um he was pretty cool afterwards, even though you know. I mean, I know it's just that kind of stuff is. It's so hard. He's very polite, even yes. though his head was spinning. Polite. I'm sure, like, what am I doing? Uh, that was so, he was so bummed. I'm sure. Yeah. And this dude was good. He Sugar. was that night, right? Yeah. He is Sugar a, was out there. He's oh, yeah. a real and he's AZ, right? Yeah, he's Arizona boy. Yeah, just had him on here like a week ago. We're getting um, out there. We're... Did you play any sports growing up? Did you play any? I could mm. see you doing like base. I could see you like baseball, and you're like the guy that bunts every time or something. And they send you in. You're like the mighty bunt. They say you know? bunt with your dick. Just yeah. stick it out there and let it hit you in the nuts, and then it's gonna go about a foot, and then you run. And I go, if you can run, I get <laughs> yeah. hit in the dick by a ball. I go, how would I do that? I go, 
you don't have any feeling down there, do you? Don't you have like a little puss? And I go, well, well that's rude. <laughs> and, it's just, and also it's a coach talking to you He goes, I'm a coach. It. I'm not a scientist. I'm just guessing by eyeballing you. So, but I would, I did play second base and uh, I did? did like, oh yeah, I loved it. I love baseball. And um, that's the hot corner. Second base is the hot corner. Second base was hot. It was actually more responsibility than you think. Oh, no, I, I think it's all the responsibility. Short sucks too, but but those are the two good ones. But you're getting shelled. Yeah. I mean, that's there's action. And then the coach's like, this fucking pipsqueak's getting too much action. And then the worst is in third grade that the, the, the uh, pitcher went down. Oh, and what happened? I got called up <gasps> like wild thing. To pitch? Yeah. No. The biggest puss in the fucking tri-state area. They go, Spade, you're up. I go, up what? I go, I can barely throw it to first from second. <laughs> so <laughs> and I have one bounce. So the, I pitched. I, and I was like this doing all the histronics, like stretching and shit. I was terrified. Were you licking your face? Like, did you even know what to do? Were you like doing some of the yeah, wrong I was, like, shit? I, I had like a cornhole bag spinning it around. I don't know why. And then uh, it looked professional and then You're i put an eye black on yeah I, I was i was sharpening my cleats <laughs> i was like are we starting it and then i pitched and these guys were so excited because oh. it was just home run derby i think i got 11 hits in a row and then they go what were we thinking coach fired there was a uh a quick vote in the stands to fire the coach <laughs> oh, damn. yeah so that i played kickball and uh that was yeah, I think everyone played kickball. That was the last time it was kind of even. And then I play, I went up for football. Oh, that was psychotic. What? Yeah, dude. Where? What school were you Scrappy at? Scrappy Saguaro in Scottsdale, Arizona. They're good now. They have a great team. And uh, But I went just because my friends were. And you know how you do. You get, oh, yeah. There's no puss on the horizon at all. I'm not famous. There's nothing clicking. Right. You're at that age too where it's everybody's still playing kind of? Has it started Everyone's to divide? Playing, yeah. And, and you know, there was, a, there was a varsity and there was B. So if you weighed under or something, it was B. But you all started together mm. and then they put you on the B squad. Oh. But by senior year, that's when I went up, I think. No, I was, I was a junior because I got clocked so hard. It was fucking uh, Lucas. Exactly. Really? Remember that movie, Lucas? I don't um, know if you've seen is it. Is that about the alien? Let's pull up a picture of that. Can you? Yeah, just no, see what it is. I don't think. Oh. Lucas? No. It's um, like Malcolm in the Middle, but a movie? <laughs> Basically. Well, I was a cross between Powder and Lucas. Lucas is Corey Haim, was it? God, I love you. You have a big screen here. This thing's fucking professional. Corey Haim was this little puss, and he liked this girl, and What's he goes he, out for click on football. It? Can we watch just an, uh, just an hour ten of it, just real quick? <laughs> and he goes up and he Zoom gets in. cremated. Charlie Sheen is a stud. Wow, Charlie Sheen and, is in this? And this little Carrot Top girl is his girlfriend. When Nona Ryder. Oh, in yeah, it? Noni's in it. Wow. And so Charlie Sheen is the stud. He's buddy, you know, he's nice to Lucas because he's a little puss. And then Lucas likes this girl. But of course she likes Charlie Sheen. Of course. This is at least keep it a foot in reality. Yeah. She's not going to go bone down on Lucas. Look at, he's like 3-1. Charlie Sheen's a full adult. Oh, yeah. I guess he's in high school. And the girl's really cute. And he's yeah. like a little nerd. He's like, have you ever see, uh, looked at a grasshopper up yeah. close? And he thinks that's a panty dropper. But the girl's like, no, I know. I step on him. <laughs> and know? then he's like, let me hop in that grass. Like, <laughs> with that. Yeah, they had grass back then. She had a bushka. Oh, I don't yeah. know if they showed it. I sort of pictured it. I can't imagine they showed a bush in the movie, huh? Was it? It's a children's movie, eh? It looked like she had Lucille Ball in a scissor hold. Oh, yeah. Big fucking red Mongo bush. Oh, what I like, I like that Jada Pinkett Smith. You know what I'm saying? I like <laughs> nothing down there, bucko. That's what I like. Knock, knock. I like that Alla Will push. Smith. Oh, you like Alla Push? I like that Alla Puss, yeah. I like that Alla Puss. Yeah. <laughs> Sickening. That's gross. You guys are disgusting. Dude, one time I remember this guy threw the, it was my first time ever at bat, right? And mm. we hadn't even had a practice, bro. That was our team. And we're the Playville Cubs. But some of they'd messed up some of the jerseys and some of them said club, some of them said like, it was <laughs> flubs. It was like, look, <laughs> yeah. like it was just, none of it made any right. sense. Dude, I get up there. This is baseball. This is, yeah, this is baseball. Or football. It w could have been either one, but it was mm. baseball. So I get up there, the guy throws it at me, right? So hard it hits me. This guy, Eric King, mm. he was like, had the toughest arm in town, dude. Yeah. And uh, he throws it at me, it hits me. I vomited, puked right out of my own mouth. 
and because you got hit so hard. Oh, dude, it was it was unbelievable. <laughs> he was the best thrower, you know, semi local thrower. thrower. Pitcher. And he hit me, and I vomited. Blech. And they called a strike, bro. What? And I was like, fixed. Oh, bro, 100%. <laughs> then another time, I finally got on base. It was like the eighth game of the season. I don't even know. I think there was like a plate tectonic shift. And literally, like, mm. uh, I just slid from home plate over to first base. Like, I didn't really naturally get there by <laughs> right. any skill of my own. A platonic shift? Yeah. And so the ground just, like, went up on one side, and it was like, yeah. And so I'm at first. Sometimes that happens. So I'm like, I got to steal, dude. If you if you can't do anything else, you got to steal a base. If you can. That was attention like the thing, getter though, right? a stealer. Oh, that's a tough move. Oh, very hard, dude. Especially if you have white legs. So, yeah. dude, I get out there and I went for it. Halfway through, I get appendicitis, bro. My <laughs> appendix busts. <laughs> I'm <laughs> laying on the ground, crying, dude, crying. Is it after you got hit in the appendix? Uh, uh, no, this was like eight games. Oh, I was later. about to say, no one connected those dots. Yeah, so I'm out. I'm all, I, and I'm just bawling, dude. It was absolutely the what worst, a puss man. in front of everyone. You're crying. Oh yeah, because it was so much pain. My appendix. It was like I don't even know what happens. I think you get like sepsis or whatever. Something happens, but you know, I was dying on the mm. inside, and the coach is like, "Get to fur, get to second, you," yeah. and just yelling racial and sexual slurs at me. Sure, you know? queer. You yeah. know, just like get there. All the things I'm against saying, but yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, you know. said, yeah, that people would pepper those in in the old days, and it was oh, yeah. not cool, and it really was humiliating. Oh, it wasn't cool. And you were getting was, shelled with them, I'm sure. It was awesome. Look Daily. at this little, yeah, boner monkey, they would call me. A little boner donor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look at this little fucking uh, stick visitor. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Stick visitor. Look at this little It's getting stick very visitor. vague. I don't, oh, I don't know if they're vague, offensive. <laughs> I'm not sure if people are like, nah. I'll let uh, that one slide. Look at this little fucking jerky loiterer over here. Jerky loiterer. Oh, did you tell him we went to that party? Is that anything worth talking about? Um. Well, I talked the other week about how we oh. went and we ended up seeing Chris Rock. Oh there. yeah, that party. But that party was star studded and, dude, there was a lot of. Uh, yeah, it was. Every turn, we saw Matt Stafford. You see a lot of different people that you would never see in one spot. That's the fun part about. Yeah. It. Yeah, David took me to the Oscars, and so then we saw uh, to the Oscars party, and yeah, and it was all, I mean, it was really super interesting. You right, know? it sounds stupid to people don't want to hear, like, you see people, but you see people that are in movies or something, or you, I saw the guy from Coda, I talked to him, I actually he's deaf, but he came up, we talked, he's from Arizona. Oh, yeah. So we talked, I'm he had an interpreter, he was, he was a stud, he sort of got his night taken away. Oh, yeah. From the whole incident. Uh, that was a drag. Because he won. It was a big deal. And then uh, They won right after that, right? And they won sort of close. The one right after was Questlove, I think, won. And that was 1,000% forgotten. And then they brought everyone out from The Godfather, which was so cool. No one cared. Nobody cared. And it was, was like, like somebody... Chris Rock. Is yeah. Will Smith still out there? He's on the loose. Yeah. Is he going to hit him again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gross. But we saw fun people and uh, some it, comedians. It was interesting. I'm trying to think of who else we saw. We're at that guy's house, dude. Oh, and then was... we went to Guy Who Series has a big party. And uh, that was a fun one, too. And when we left, it was still pouring in with oh. famous people. They go to all these different parties. I stayed up until 2.30. It was a fucking record. Yeah. That was like... Not since New Year's Eve when I was about 12. Wow. Yeah. Dude, remember right right when we rolled in, some dude was in there just doing blow and something like some yoga oh, was yeah, in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, but a lot of people knew you there. That was fun because you see people like, you saw some dude from One Direction. Remember? Oh, yeah, we saw that idea. dude. Some guy from Euphoria, I remember. Oh, yeah, we saw. John Voight, we saw. You knew him. We saw that girl, Sydney Sweeney, and I go, hey, you're good on that show. I was like, shut up. Oh, I didn't even leave know her that alone. Part. Yeah, but she just walked by, so I go, "Oh, hey, you're like," you know. but that's what happens. At least you have like a free pass at those things because every single person is known for something. So you, right. you can say hi to anyone really. Right. Yeah, it's it like courtesy. They yeah, just, and there's no like like PR people in there. Or no, and they can't get get between. You. But yeah. you just say hi, or give them a head nod, or say someone's good, or you saw their movie, so it's fun. Yeah. But that night was pretty good. And then we left. Oh, we saw Kim K, right? We left, remember? Yeah, She dude. popped out of a sprinter. I think she walked butt first out of it, I feel like. In my imagination, that's what happened. It was <laughs> she, just like... She at least said hello. That was nice. Dude, I feel like her butt cheeks were wearing earrings, dude. They that were? Thing is nice. I didn't even look. Yeah. She is someone... All those Kardashians, I never see. Yeah. For being out here and 
being in showbiz. I never see him. So. And one of them looks different. I mean, one of them got facial, so, you know, she looks a little bit different, but still, I think she was there too. Chloe was Chloe there. Chloe was there? Yeah. Maybe. I don't, I didn't see her. Uh, I saw Kendall on my flight the other day and uh, I didn't say anything to her. Didn't. You saw her on your flight? Yeah, I didn't bore the fucking shit out of her with my antics. Where were y'all going? Hey, you want some peanuts? You know, I had a couple zingers ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couple zingers. Um, Why are we taxi so far? Did you ever get into like whenever you were growing up? Was there ever like a um, like what was that like a job that you had at the time? Because you got into football. That's interesting. Did you have any job at the time? Did you ever get in the football game? I got I got nailed so hard in rehearsal. This is why I didn't make the cut. I called practice rehearsal. Yeah, I was like a drama guy. I wasn't even in drama, but I was just saying things wrong, and I was like, "When's rehearsal today?" And then. Uh, <laughs> This guy, I was 114. I remember, I think I was 134 in full pads. But I took weightlifting. I was actually a little scrappy. Yeah. I've sort of deteriorated since then. But but then I was kind of, not tough, but I could wear the pads and not cry. And I was a good jump roper. Oh, Because we really? took weightlifting as an elective. And I could, whoosh, I could do crossovers, doubles, backwards, forwards. I was great. Wow. Oh, yeah. Chicks love that fast feet. Yeah, I'm like, what's up? What's up? Yeah. What's up? In between. Like, dish, 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 dish. And then they're like, oh. Uh, family is poor, so I canceled that out. And then when I went for football, I remember this guy hit me so hard that uh, just like that movie this time, but they just said, you got to get out of here. I appreciate you came down. I appreciate it, but <laughs> you came down. You, yeah, I came down. Like, thanks for trying. I was, I was yeah, probably yeah. practice for eleven minutes. It oh. was just like they, even my own friends were like, just sit in the stands with the girls like you yeah. used to. And, uh, and yeah, God loves you. I maybe, had nothing. Yeah, maybe do something with the church or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I sat out there, and uh, they go, maybe, maybe jump in on that bake sale. You know, help, help the gals out. Do the carpet match the drapes? You see people ask themselves sometimes, or somebody will ask you, do the carpet match the drapes? If they trying to see your body or see you naked. And men will ask that to women sometimes, do the carpet match the drapes or whatever, or do the curtain match the floorboard or whatever they say. And gay men will say it too, does the sideburn match the, the, uh, the nut uh, hair? What I'm talking about is Manscaped, guys. Manscaped has the full package you need for spring cleaning this year to de-hair your body if you want to get some hair or organize the hair. Their performance package 4.0 from Manscaped is the only tool you need to keep your boys looking and smelling like the fresh tulips that your partner wants. Ooh. That's right. They got the Crop Preserver, um, the Crop Reviver, that ball deodorant, if your balls are bad out, they got the plow, the plow, plow 2.0. Perfect razor for the finest shave on your face. Get your face well. That's right. If you're using the lawnmower 4.0 on your balls and on your face, you're doing it wrong because the plow 2.0 is for your face. Get 20% off in free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. That's 20% off in free shipping with the code T-H-E-O. At manscaped.com, it's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. You know, you may have a big move coming in your life. You might be uh, moving somewhere, moving to Spain. You might be moving to uh, Antarctica. Or you might be moving to, um, to New Orleans or even Albuquerque. No matter where you're going, you might need auto insurance if your car ain't cared for properly before you leave. Or you might need home insurance when you get there. That's why the Zebra can help make it easy for you to find the best insurance. Yeah, they do all the shopping for you. A lot of you don't like to shop. Don't do it. Let the Zebra help you. They compare home and car quotes from every major insurance carrier. And they do it side by side so you can see all the facts right there in front of you to make the easy, correct decision. The Zebra could save you over $900 a year on car and home insurance combined, and they can do it all in under five minutes. Show your support for the show by going to this special URL, thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O, and get your free quote today. That's at thezebra.com slash Theo. 
So I did that, and then I went, and I was a skateboarder, though. That's where really? I was having fun. Yeah, I was always a skateboarder. So pools, pipes, there, there's 22-foot pipes out there. And that stuff was big in Arizona. Like, that's one of the areas. I mean, just West Coast, and, and, and at least Arizona had some of that overflow. It's a I'm great sure. no-money pastime. On my Instagram, I, I like all these skateboard things, so I it comes up my feed. Well, yeah, and also they have all those abandoned washes and stuff. Are those empty yeah. washes in the- uh, Those aren't the great. Way. They're rough on the wheels because they're, they're, they're not as smooth, but they had 22 foot desert pipes, which are a thousand percent illegal. They're out in the desert. I don't know what they're making. I'm sure that Rogan would have a field day with it because oh, yeah. they're just out there for no reason. And then I, we go skate them. And one time I, I was trying to get to vertical, but it's such a wide transition because you're going, you're going up, just trying to get halfway up, but it's terrifying because vertical is 11 feet up. And so I got to vertical and I was, it, I was almost weightless because you're so high up and then you're getting to where your feet are above your head, you know, because you're trying to lay out yeah. a front side. And then my, my board, I lost, you know, kind of traction. So it just flew, I flew off the side from 11 feet up and just hit <laughs> and my foot, Jody <laughs> and my brother, Andy, they just saw a little puff of fucking dust come up and then they heard me go, me, <laughs> started crying. Dude, I started it, crying. Isn't it bad when you get hurt so bad that a sound comes out of you that you didn't even know was in Yeah, exactly. The initial hit was like, and then I go, like, they go, is there a fucking sheep over there? Dude, I used to make, when I would get real, be like, gross. Trying to hide the pain, too. That's the worst part. <laughs> Breathe through it. Dude, when you're trying to pretend like you're not hurt, you're like, oh. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. Even in front of guys, I'm like, oh. So I, ultimately, the the wrap up to that story is I was doing a skate park. I was trying to learn aerial axle stars, uh, where you go up, you do an aerial, and you land on your trucks. Do an aerial, like you fly out about a foot and you land on your trucks, and then you drop back in. It's fucking terrifying. And this is where I knew I'm too much. I couldn't take it. It's too scary. So I do it. I miss it. And I fall all the way down to the bottom, as predicted, why I'm scared. And then I broke both wrists. Uh -oh. And the consensus around the bowl was, get out of the pool. Damn. Get out, get your board, Damn. we're next, why are you still in the pool? And so I had to like, get it, sort of grab my board somehow and run out. Oh, that's hard and, too. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm like this. And then, and then I go, I think my arms are broken. <laughs> and my yeah. brother goes, you're fine. And I go, God damn. He goes, we just got here. <laughs> and I go, all right. Because we had two hours to skate. So I go, all right. So he has me lay on our Lee car. Remember Lee car, that old car? It was like really uh, tiny. Bring it up. You're too young. Show him a Lee car. And so I laid on the hood and, and you know, like on the windshield like this with my arms out, like I'm yeah. on a fucking IV drip. And it's, that's yeah. not it. That's the general Lee. Yeah, what the fuck? Jesus. Uh, anyway, don't fire these guys till after. And so, uh, he zooms in on like, it's he's still back it. to General Lee. <laughs> like, like, he's like, oh, you mean it. Boss Hog? I'm like, no, you're getting farther away. <laughs> it's called L-E and then car. It's yeah, Le Car. Yeah, Le Car. So I'm laying on the, on the windshield and then the skate park guy goes, hey, Andy, you got to take your brother home. He goes, fuck that. I ju we just got here. <laughs> and, and cause we drove all the way there and we got the car for the yeah. night. And we had two hours and he goes, fuck. And my stepdad is a doctor. So I went home, he drove me all the way home, flooring it the whole way, he goes, I'm gonna come back. You're like hanging your wrist out the window Yeah, to I'm keep by the way cool. terrified, so much stress, no wonder my neck's all fucked yeah. up. So I get home, he dumps me with my stepdad and goes, hey, fix him, he says he's hurt, he's a fucking pussy. And he goes, <laughs> goes back to the skate park. My stepdad, drunk, as always, he's a doctor. Yeah. And he goes, let's take That's you down drunk. and take a look. So we go to take x-rays at, you know, 11 at night. I, I look around the corner. I'm no doctor. I see two cracks down the middle of him. And he goes, he's staring kind of fuzzy. And he goes, well, let's sit on it till tomorrow and see what happens. I go, see, they're broken, dude. <laughs> Even my friend goes, hey, dude, I didn't know they're broken. I got, so he goes, I go, what, what are we waiting till tomorrow? He goes, just let's play it out. I go, what are you saying? There's nothing to play out. It's, he goes, ah, you're a little bit rattled. I go, they're broken. I'm in so much pain, but we don't have Advil back then. We don't have Vicodin, nothing. Yeah, and you, could, uh, you couldn't even open a bottle of Advil. I can't even imagine. Oh, that. I can't do shit. I'm just like holding up in the air, like hee -hee. Yeah. small whimpers. Go home, sleep, impossible, so much pain. Oh. Next day he goes, now he's clear headed. He goes, we got to fix those broken arms. <laughs> go, yeah. So he just gives me a cast because I'm going to school. No, he gives me a splint on both of them. So I go to school 
first day of freshman year, and you know what? I looked cool. It was right really? before the first day of school. Freshman year, new high school, and they're like, who's this fucking hard ass? Wow, because you had two splinter Yeah, arms. I had, now my turquoise Quicksilver shorts might have canceled yeah. out my toughness, but I had a new OP shirt from Miller's Outpost. I was like, what's up, what's up? White hair, I had all the components of being cool, but no game. I was tan back then, skinny, I had fucking long white hair. I was a skater. My brother was cool. Ooh. So my brother was cool. And then I was a math guy. Am I? So then you got into math. You went from baseball to football to skateboarding. Well, I was always, math. this was this was eighth grade into high school. Okay. Uh, so I wasn't doing that shit yet. But I was a math nerd and reading and all that in school. So I didn't have many friends except this little Vietnamese kid. Really? Named Shin. Ooh, and we yeah. would walk. They name a lot of them after body parts too. Yeah. No, because his brother quad. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, but his sister clavicle. Wait a second. Yeah. So I, 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 I was smart uh, for a while there, and then it tapered off. But oh, really? Uh, in second grade, I went down to fourth grade for reading and math. Me and Shin. Really? Yeah. So you went from second to fourth grade. Yeah. They're like fuck third grade. You're going all the way. Yeah, third grade is a fucking joke for me. Wow. So I'd go down and go, hey gals, gotta run, gotta run down to fourth grade for Ooh. reading and math. Be back soon, brb. But nobody cared. Yeah, they have bigger racers down there too. <laughs> I go, you ladies. It's a whole new world, and you guys aren't ready for it. Yeah. So I go down there, and then I uh, got into chess, and uh, I was spelling bee champ in sixth grade. I was chess champ. I was. Uh, Read 47 books in Damn. fifth grade. Did you do that Pizza Hut thing where you get the pizza pan pizza if you read the books? Did they do that? No, that might have been the Louisiana area. Where you took it over there? Yeah, I think they baited you for reading for food. Baited you, yeah. yeah. Hey, if you can read, we'll feed you. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's called the Read and Feed Program. <laughs> uh, no, I, I I went to state chess. You no, did? but I got measles. Yeah, I couldn't play. And then For spelling bee? Oh, for chess. I went, oh, I went to Spelling Bee State and I got smoked. And then I went chess. I fell out because I had a measles for three weeks. I was, We've talked about this, the Spelling Bee word. Because remember, I got hard. beat on inconvenience. This girl got this girl in our uh, class or whatever was pregnant, right? Yeah. Um, this girl, Helena. And I don't want to say her last name. But, okay. pr I, you know, sure. it's the Helena that was pregnant. If you're listening and went to school with me. Every story, you're like, Helena had a rib in her forehead. <laughs> well, go she ahead. got pregnant, right? She's in fifth grade. She's oh, yeah, in fifth I heard about grade. this. She should be in the Guinness book, but go ahead. And we didn't know you could even get pregnant, right? But I rem <laughs> she won the fucking spelling bee, dude. Um, but I missed, yeah, wow, unbelievable. And people were calling her all kinds of racial slurs and stuff. But I remember, and it, she was white. Just, <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy thing. It was just people were just, you just, know, that's just mean. Then they're just trying to be mean. Oh yeah, nobody was trying to be like helpful. Yeah. You know? But also like uh, I remember <laughs> inconvenience, and I tried to spell it, and I was up there hot dogging and shit, and I got <laughs> hot dogging. Yeah, and I got, and and, and that was it. Man. Uh, well, my first word was apparatus, and I go, I go a p a p, and they go, I go. You're come on. I fixed it. I didn't say that was the final one. Wow. And they shut you down like that? Security walks me out. Oh. Hey, we don't want a scene. So I came back. My mom's like, How was it? I go, I won. You lied to her? No, I didn't. I said I got fucking smoked. But uh I got the chess and then I got older. Oh, so when I watched I remember I was with this comic up you know, like I was probably twenty five and we and he and he yeah he heard that story and he never believed it and he goes we went to this movie where it was about a kid that was going to play the best chess champion in the world it was some stupid movie don't pull it up I don't remember the name and then in the middle of it he goes I knew you were a psycho because I'm just watching it casually and then they're showing the chessboard and in the middle of it he makes one move and I go no <laughs> and he goes the fuck I go god damn the queen and then they go. And what happened was that was the hugest fuck up because the guy took oh. his queen, but I got it within milliseconds. Oh, so I was looking at him going, don't do it, don't do it. Anyway, so then, uh, oh, I had a story to tell you about. We were saying about when you're at the Oscar party. It's hard to, uh, if anyone's still listening, it's hard to, you know, look cool at those places because everyone's so famous. Yeah. And I learned that lesson because I was out one time with this young lady about, you know, 10 years ago. And she was sort of squirrely. And then one time she was, yeah, yeah, I'll go out. Obviously not that into me, fine. But a little above my pay grade, you know, she's really pretty and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know your history, dude. Yeah, so I go, all right, let's go, whatever. So I finally, we're going to go out. 
and then because we saw Casey Affleck and remember oh yeah we did I said something nice. so stupid to him oh yeah that was so great you're like oh man sorry <laughs> oh I heard you just got I heard you, I heard sorry, you got, I got no I got, heard you got married oh, and he yeah, goes I he I got what and I go and then immediately because I'm a little drunk I go wait what am I fucking talking about and he goes well I got divorced 12 years ago and then I have been single for eight years. I go, yeah, that's it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even piece it together at all. I just go, yeah. I just try to run over it. And I don't know what to say. I'm just sitting there like, you heard the man. Yeah, you, know, you try to just, back me up. Yeah. And I had no case. But it was so loud, too, so we're trying to talk. Anyway, Casey, who's also a studly actor. So I always thought those guys are cool, like, you know, these type, like Benicio Del Toro. I like Sean Penn. He was there, I think. All these actors that are cool. And so in the old days, I take this girl out. This is the lesson I learned. So I know Joaquin Phoenix a little bit, and he goes, hey, we're going over to this thing, me and Casey. If you want to come by and just say hi or have a drink or whatever. And I go, oh, I, was, uh, I go, yeah, yeah, I'll come by. I go, can I bring someone? Because the truth is, if you're around people that are kind of well-known, if you bring someone extra around, it's not bad. It's just... It's risky. It's eyes and ears where they don't talk freely, and they don't want someone that might tell their story somewhere or what you talked about or whatever. So I gave him a warning. I said, yeah, yeah, very cool about it. I bring this uh, lady friend and uh, she's fucking all over them so hard. And I'm like, immediately I go, this is a mistake. Oh. And she's like, oh my God. Ooh. And so she's talking and then she literally, if she's not like sweating them hard enough, she goes to one of them, didn't you show your dick in a movie? And I was like, this is a little out of line. Yeah, and he goes, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, they're being respectful to me going, Fucking pull her off, dude. Yeah, get and, your and, date. and she goes, oh, I saw that one, Ye, you know, va va voom yeah. or something or yow. I go, I don't think that's yeah. appropriate. Yeah, yow. <laughs> that's crazy to see it. Ooh la la. <laughs> and, uh, and no, she goes, yum yum. Oh. And I go, okay, it, more please. Yeah. So, uh, wow. And so then they. And she left you for them? No, she would have. She couldn't. I was a ride. So I. I go, oh, we're out of here or something. Yeah. And then I... Uh, Sorry about this, dame. Drove her home. She's sticking her head up, just staring out the window like a dog, like how it was fun for a while. And yeah. now she's back with me. And she's it just sucks. watching Manchester by the Sea on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> way home. Going, fast forwarding. Is this the one with the dick in it? <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. was horrified. And then uh, oh. I'm like, by the way, those guys don't even like you. She's like, oh, they both gave me their number. I go, oh. <laughs> No, they didn't. They were very nice and cool. And then I said sorry to them. And then she didn't say sorry to me. Oh. And then that was that. I dropped her at the curb. I said, that's it. You don't do that to Spade. Yeah, you're out of here, baby. Yeah, baby. Later, babe. I know. Don't make, make me put these on. That's like only happened about a thousand times. Like it's since. the 1910s. Um, Moral of the story, don't be with super cool people all the time. Yeah. Don't worry, never happened to me. When you put in, uh, do the t question that came in about the. Oh, yeah. That fits in with what he was just talking about. The girl, the guy had a question. Theo always rounds himself like, oh, you know these two guys, they work at the septic tank company. And <laughs> the girl's like, oh. So you make it sure you're made. the king guy. Yeah. These hot chicks, what's your secret? What do you say? That you're good looking and that you're funny. Can you play it for me? Oh, he said hot chicks? I'm All not right. sure. Can you play These hot chicks, what's your secret? Is oh. Will Sasso? <laughs> that you're good looking and that you're funny? I answered my own question, didn't I? <laughs> All right, gang, gang, bud. He's drunk. Cheers. Well, he's Canadian, probably. I was about that's to say, a... is he on that Alaska show where they live? Yeah, you could see that. Well, I think that's like Gold Rush or something. Yeah, he's or one Gold of those. Salmon. Yeah, salmon with gold inside of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the yeah what's the secret, you think? What is the secret sauce, man? No, I think the only thing, uh, you know. Because you're kind of the, un you're almost, you're not the underdog when it comes to like labia, but you definitely are like. Labia. That guy seems like a, re you know. Well, like I think it was more, it was a combo of, I'm on shows with pretty girls. So like I play a skirt chaser on Just Shoot Me for six years. Yeah. And there's always, they pair me with a pretty girl. Then I'm do it in Grown Ups. I'm like, hey, you know. And then I do Rules of Engagement. And so that's sort of the thing. So it's a little bit blurry because they go, oh, you date, but most of those are on TV. And then in real life, sure, I like girls that are kind of fun, funny and um, and whatever my type is, cute. But that doesn't mean they like me. So I, I, I'm just, no one's looking at me going, I got to hook up with this guy. Right. Just, you know them, you talk to them, and then maybe 
eventually if you're if you're normal in LA. If you're actually just like reliable and normal, that's a good quality because it, there's so many kooks that you start they start to go, ah, oh, this guy might be all right, just because he's not Oh yeah, so nuts. Like you just, as long as you just stay the course, eventually yeah, you're, you're yeah. the only one on the road. Or just be normal to them, and then you know, because they're not like gonna be jumping all over me. So you just do whatever, and then either you get a vibe at some point. And but there are some nice girls out there. I went out with a girl recently, and I really liked her, but she was out of town. You know, she lives in New oh. York, and it's that's a tough one. Tried and uh, really dug her, but it just couldn't. It's just too. It's too tough. It falls apart. Was there ever a time where you were going to settle down? Did you have a? Did you ever have like a moment? Did you ever? Have you been married or not? I don't think so. No. Have you? Uh, was there ever? Did you ever think about it? Like seriously, was there ever a time where you? Did? Yeah. Because I struggle with that kind of stuff. I struggle a lot with like. I don't know if I could. You know, I'd like to. I think one day have a wife or something, but I don't know if I could. You know, sometimes like I feel like I'm like that because I have run in to that situation that got very close, and I go. I would be scared to disappoint them. I just don't know if I could handle it. Um, I think we all ideally would like to find someone very, very cool. And in your head, you can picture it, and that's what you would like. To have it happen, you watch it crumble all around you, and you go, am I the one that's going to beat the system? Like, it's so tough. And everyone's like, it's work. I'm like, I don't want it to be... Because I've done it where it's harder than my work work. Like, yeah. oh, I'm yeah, just thinking about the girl all day going, oh, she's mad. I, you know, what do we got to do? And so I never quite nail it. And I, I will freely admit it's, I, I'm a lot better at other things. And that I try to get it right. And um, it's one of the curses of life. It's very, very hard to get it right. Yeah. And I feel like it's unfair because I should get married. And I should. I don't know. I just don't want to blow it. And I watch my parents and then I watch my people around me and Half I ask the people and, and the people always hate each other and I go <clears throat> afterwards I go I don't want to hate someone I don't want them to hate me it's just so heavy and and LA doesn't treat it like it's a big deal no people get married for press they get married for, for an Instagram photo oh it's and, crazy and here. then they and then they go oh yeah the average marriage is probably two years yeah and that's a year they hung in longer going yeah. We can't get divorced yet. Yeah, we got to at least be seen on the beach a couple more times. But yeah, you'll see guys come out like they just came out of the mines. They're like, mm. oh, yeah, it's been a good week with the wife. And the yeah. guy's just like oil all over his face. Yeah, and the guys are no day or at the, the beach woman either. Too. Yeah, yeah, they're or all the tough. woman will be like, Jesus. Yeah, because they, they put up with a lot of shit. And it's a new world. There's Instagram. There's Tinder. There's So used to be you met the girl you saw. Like my yeah. friend in Arizona. He's he, he's got it made in a way. I'm envious because he like worked at this place. He saw three girls every day in his day. One worked at Circle K. One worked yeah. at the post office. So he picked the one he got along best with, and they got married. And that was it. But there's no distractions in his life. Right. It's like that, and he does that every day. And they go out. They have their kids, and that's the way you do it. And then I'm sure he's got grasses greener syndrome. And uh, and then but, one girl said, "There's the one girl that actually got really close with." She said, "The." Uh, she said, I'm finding out as I get older, the grass is browner. Mm. And it's so it's such a great thing to say because you see the married friends and then you see a little behind the curtain and you go, it's not, you know, and yeah. I'm not saying anti-marriage. I'm saying if I did it, I would do my best. Yeah. I just, you're, you're tying in someone else's life to yours. And that's, now you're responsible for two people and that's hard. And you get their energy and their, your energy and... It's it's hard. It's a hard to do, especially if you're real honest with yourself. If I know that I have these kind of maybe shortcomings or uncertainties, yes. Then if I know I'm going to go pin the without even having cured these or or, or just yeah. know if there are issues for someone else, and I'm going to go pin you because you're when you get married, you're kind of pinning those into somebody else. Yeah, as they well. they inherit all your problems and uh, they have to deal with them every day because you yeah. you know got on dates like oh yeah. Have you ever dated two people at the same time and oh. then, and then they go uh, and you mix it up a little bit. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I go, how's your mom? Did she have fun? Oh, and she's yeah. like, at chemo? And I go, oh, I thought she went to Magic Mountain. That was the other girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you go, oh, is your mom okay? She yeah. goes, it was her birthday. I go, oh, yeah. Like, no, how I was thought Wisconsin? She had... Like, I'm from France. And you're like, I go, oh, I know. I'm yeah. saying Jeez. Southwest. You have yeah, to stop like... there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, dude. I don't, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. What a layover. You uh, had. No, I've been there. I mean, yeah. but no, my younger self was, uh, but still, obviously, listen, I'm not married, but I'm no prize. Like, oh, you, you, this, you get a lot of girls flirt with you. Girls tell me they like you and, uh, they like Kyle Dunnigan. Oh yeah, Kyle was just in here, man. Yeah, Kyle's Beautiful a fucking guy. stud. 
Yo, I, yeah, Kyle's got to get. I mean, Kyle, Kyle goes. He goes. <laughs> he goes. I got a lot of shit from my friends because uh, I was dating a girl 19 years younger than me, and he goes. But you know what? I was in college. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I go, so she was one? He goes, yeah, whatever. Uh, that's a funny joke. And Did they ever have any like pyramid schemes or anything like in your area when you were growing up? Do you <laughs> what remember a that? Question. Well, I think my mom was, you know, my mom was very tough. She got divorced. You know, my, my dad left. I don't think she had a big vote in it. He, he, we got to Scottsdale and he took off. Was so. he a criminal or anything like that? No, but he, 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 he was... Uh, we were four, six, and eight, three boys. So it's very tough for a mom oh. with three boys. This, now we're starting to come back to why I'm crazy. So <laughs> she's pressured. He pulled her out of college, so she has no writing degree. She's being a writer. So she had to get two jobs, you know, department store, secretary, whatever, just to pay our bills and, you know, just to barely make barely enough. And so uh, we were just sort of on our own. Yeah. And then, but she, she couldn't even date really. You know what I mean? It was very... Big sacrifice. Yeah, it's a big Same sacrifice. Mom. And then what did you ask me though? I forget about that. Pyramid schemes? Oh yeah. So she would get these jobs sometime where they would try to get her in on one of those, like Tupperware, yeah. those kind of things. And she's such a sweet woman and uh, and you just see like back people taking advantage and all that's just such a tough world. I, I I don't know. She really had it tough and she's still kicking and uh, we all try to take care of her because, you know, the, that sacrifice you don't know to your older because I was a kid I was like why don't we have more stuff like we have no food we have nothing but she was doing her best and then I got a few beans in my jeans so I said well I'm going to take care of my mom she always said I don't know because she will never ask for anything I said mom anything in my account is yours like I don't care how much you need just take it because I would never be here so wow. got her house and that kind of stuff but but she doesn't want to ask and sometimes I go do you need money or something like how much I don't want to open a full account at QVC because yeah. my money will be gone in two seconds. But I do, you know, <laughs> little bird fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she gets like every hour. It's like a morphine. She's a drip. shopaholic. She calls me. Turn it on. <laughs> Turn it on right now, David. Look at this. It's a water bubbler that. Uh, and I go, what does it do? She goes, Oh, I don't know, but you grab it. There's yeah. ten left. I go, Mom, you're exactly the crowd they want. They, you bite and they give it, yeah. and they tell you the old ten left yeah. special price. It's always like a baby diaper that sorts coins or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, look at little Timothy shit a roll of dimes. Uh, huh? uh, he's shit, but look at this. Here's a roll of nickels. <laughs> yeah, he's impressive. He's saving, bro. Yeah, saving yeah. with every dump. Get two things done at once. So that's it. So she's out in Scottsdale and. Uh, and uh, my dad, you know, came in and out. Do you have both parents? No, my dad died. My dad would be like 120 right now, I think. And then my mom, I have my mom. So, and we have a tough time with some numbers, but I, you know, even hearing you say that, it just reminds me to like, just be more cognizant of that our parents went through different stuff and they went through a different time, you right. know? It was like just a different time back then. You know, one time, <laughs> no, well, my mom. My mom would get asked out, and it would be ruined. But because she'd let us vote. Uh -huh. <laughs> no way, really. She goes. One guy was. I think the heir to the Anheuser Busch family. I'm like, fuck that what? guy, Randy I, Bush. No, Anheuser Busch, like the oh. Budweiser. Okay. So he was, wow, he was. Uh, he probably had a million dollars back then. <laughs> I mean, money's nothing now. Everyone has a trillion, but he was very rich. But my my. Older brother totally cockblocked that one. Really? My older brother Brian, but he he's super cool and we get along great now. But it was just just being stupid kid shit. But I remember she'd come home and she goes, "What about that one?" And I go, "Boo!" First of all, she didn't realize we all didn't want a new dad and we didn't want anybody to take attention away from us. So I'm like, you know, I've gone over it, mom, and I think that's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> he's that's not no going to Hollywood. Dog, yeah. yeah. So and then I'm like. I go, I like this guy who's an ice cream man or something. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> now that guy had a certain something. That guy's got a certain John of Sequoia. Yeah, he had huh? Otter Pops. Yeah. So I, yeah. I would go and give us free ice cream. I'm like, this guy's got something. Yeah, this guy's special, dude. Yeah, so she's great. Um, yeah, my mom dated, I remember, like a uh, the first black a black <laughs> Jewish guy in our area, right? Okay. And we I'm never, sure he had an easy time. In <laughs> we never even Louisiana. seen it or heard of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she dated another guy that ran a car wash. And we thought that was amazing because all the quarters. You oh, know, how fun. When you're a kid, quarters are everything. Like oh, if you get for a quarter, asteroids. Oh just whatever you want. Well, you're younger than me, but I, I loved 
quarters. But yeah, the like, opportunity, if, mom, give me some quarters. Everything's in quarters, yeah. So when this dude would show up, just freaking Johnny Jingle Pants, you know, just like. <laughs> what? Wait, why do you have so many quarters? Because he owned oh, a car wash. Oh, you owned a car wash. But I love that he keeps the quarters. Oh, he had so many quarters because <laughs> the even... ladies would hear it. Oh, Jingle Back Johnny. then, there was something about that. It was just like, you you know, you were just that pants Santa, dude. You just had that jingle going. You got a jingle in your pocket? Yeah. No, I've got a tiny, soft dick. She's <laughs> like, no, I was, I was trying to be sexy. But yes. I've got a fucking half a pack of certs. <laughs> oh, no, that's my wiener, too. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got two roll aids still left in a roll. I, yeah, certs. And I was telling you something about roll aids the other day, and I'm like, I wonder if Theo knows what roll aids are, because I, I say... Oh, Older yeah. references, certs is definitely going back. Certs, I certs is going back, but certs was surprisingly good, bro. Oh, and also, you know what? My dad used to drink all the time. Maylocks. Do you remember Maylocks? Oh, I didn't know what it meant, but it means your kids are shitty because <laughs> yes. they're giving you a stomachache at all times. <laughs> my dad would drive around in this Cutlass, this Delta eighty eight. Hot. He bought off a couple of brothers that lived around the block, <clears throat> and it had these huge speakers in the trunk. Right? I mean, he's eighty years old. He had these huge speakers just blaring Rush Limbaugh and like yeah. 870 AM. Blaring Rush Limbaugh. Just like with bass though. It was like yeah. Rush with bass, right? Like Paul Harvey, good day, yeah. you know? And just sipping fucking Maalox. And he would come to pick us up at school and it was so embarrassing, dude. It was like, he was older than my grandparents by 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. My dad was. So even when people came, people had never seen <laughs> anything old, okay. this old. They'd never seen, we didn't have a book this old in our school. Like there were, people had never seen like, it seemed like the Mayflower was showing up, yeah. you know, when he rolled <laughs> off. And he would sit and wait in the carpool and he would doze <laughs> off, dude. And he would just have Maylocks on his face and it was just like, oh, oh gross. Somebody you murder know, he's, me. He's doing SPD farts. Oh. Uh, Sinking them in those fucking yeah, seats. In those seats, bro. They used to really hold a fart. <laughs> They'd hold it. You get out of school, you go, what the fuck? He's like, hey. yeah. My dad used to pick us up once a, like every six months, you know. He and, and 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 my mom. The hard part was, I look back. We didn't have his number. It was a hard line, you know. Oh. So he'd call us and go, "It's your dad on the phone." You know, she was never like slamming him, but she's like, and I go, "All right." We were so excited. He goes, how'd you like to go to Shakey's Friday? We're like, fuck yeah. So we all get dressed up and then he doesn't come. But he doesn't call oh. either, you know. My mom's like, get in here. I'll make you some plums. Yeah. <laughs> get in here. Put three yeah. plums down. <laughs> but uh, she she goes, so my dad was like that. And then he'd pick us up. He goes, I got a dune buggy. And she's like, what the fuck? Never gave any child support once. So she's like... Oh. I'm like, isn't that great? And she's like, I mean, kind of, but we don't have food, but sure. <laughs> and so he picks up a dune buggy, and then we're like, yay, Dad. And she's smoking her Salem's in the doorway going, real hero. <laughs> and then, But we loved it. We never even connected. Like, Yeah. As then, a kid, you don't know. And then he's like, he gave me a dollar. She's like, well, he owes us 70 grand. You know, it's a start. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we never got child support. She never got alimony. Damn. And he was just flouncing around single in Scottsdale. So she's close enough. If she had Instagram, she would have blown her brains out. I mean, because yeah. she she could hear from her friends, like, did you hear he was down with yeah. some floozy? Yeah. And she's like, I don't need to hear that. But Down it, there at the Bolarama. Huh? Yeah, down there at, you know, whatever dumb shit place we used to go to. And then she, nowadays, you're basically on low jack. You know, you've got everyone from Dumois, that site, everyone. Like, if there's not enough paparazzi outside, now they're inside. Now every person is, yeah, is everybody able to can rat be. you out. So it's just a, getting to be a dangerous yeah. world. But it's it, it's fun, sort of, I guess. You know, the other day I got hit with a subscription for something. It said, uh, oh, it was plywood. I'd gotten me a couple cuts of plywood for the garage. And uh, I, tick, I ticked the wrong box on the website. And next thing you know, I'm getting there, keep shipping me. Just sending me that P wood over and over. I mean, just, I got so many pieces of it now. Damn, I could really build a real bad, bad, just, just, I could build a boat that doesn't stand a chance. But there's a company called Truebill that can help you out. If you're having trouble juggling subscriptions to things that you subscribe for or accidentally subscribe for, Truebill is there. You spend five bucks here, 10 bucks there. Monthly subscriptions often feel like they're a good deal until you forget about them or until you didn't want them. That's why Truebill takes control of the subscriptions for you. 
It can cancel them with just one click. They empower you to save more and spend less and see everything in one space to take back control of your financial life. They've been featured on the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, Forbes, and the Washington Post. Take it from Jeb D., who says, I've saved at least $1,000, and a Truebill team does all the work. That's what he said. Yep. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash T-H-E-O. Go right now. T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L. Truebill.com slash Theo. It could save you thousands a year and keep the plywood off your back. Truebill.com slash Theo. You know, if you've ever suffered from high interest debt, it's, 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 it's dang just, it's mortifying because you, you're trying to do something good for yourself by taking on a, a credit, a responsibility, a monthly payment, but the interest is high on it and it breaks your heart because you could use that money. Well, saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial freedom and upstart Powered personal loans can help you pay down that HID, that high interest debt, all online with simple simple, and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. It's okay to have debt, but it really hurts when you got to do that extra. And Upstart help you not do that extra. You can check your rate in five minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. And Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score, so they consider other factors like your income, employment, and other information. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash T-H-E-O. That's upstart.com slash Theo. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Stay away from high interest debt. Go to upstart.com slash Theo. And now back to the episode. It's dangerous. Life's such a fucking weird thing, man. You don't need to know everything about everyone at all times. That's I the know. thing. Do you miss the days when there wasn't when it wasn't social media? Do you miss that? I, I miss it because well, I mean, there's some, the, the funny answer is l- lying is almost extinct. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you used to be able to lie about shit. Anything to everybody. Bro, but, dude, we would go camping. And I remember one time we went camping as a group with like mm-hmm. a, it wasn't Boy Scouts. It was like Boy Scouts through the church. It was basically just like seeing who was the hottest one of the pastor or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it was mm-hmm. shady, right? Yeah. It was like, why are we camping just right by the church? Like right by, or right by the pastor's house and stuff? Why, like, are, we, just, why are we playing a game called Orgy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, why is why yeah. is there a glory hole? <laughs> yeah. yeah, why do we have orifice badges? <laughs> so uh I remember the mm. um oh shit, what was I telling you about? Oh, the pa- uh we went to a church, this camp. What were we gonna say? What were you saying? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> What are we saying? We've turned into Whitney's podcast. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> bop, bop, bop. What yeah. were you doing? God. What were we just talking about? You remember? Lying. Oh, lying. Oh, and I remember we're going on oh, this church lying. camp. That's right. And I told everybody that Jay Leno died. It was a three day camp. And I was like, man, you, you guys had him hit? floating for three days on that one? Yeah. And nobody could know. It was like you had oh, so much that's ability. Power to like um, create, like yeah. part of creativity is gone because everything can creating be- Creating lies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everything can be fact checked now. Yes, I have to say, I, I and I joke about that because I'm not a big liar. I, yeah, I have to say that I'm pretty straightforward to everybody, which is good and bad, but, but back, but I'm saying anyone, you can't say anything. Back then you could say you're going camping and you could be at your friend's house next door to your mom's for a week and no one would know. Oh, he's camping. Like, yeah. I just saw him. But, you know, with everyone posting and this and that and ratting you out. So, But I think it's it's good in a way, but it's getting too much. And and the problem with science and all these things and technology is they're trying to, like, even emulate movies. And they go, remember when they came up with this? We should do that. And you're like, they just made that up. But now it's getting so far that you're getting stuff you don't want, you know. And then when they get in AI and all this stuff. Robots will take over. I think it's just, I think we might as well just fold our cards. I mean, I I mean we think it's going to be way in the future. It's probably in like yeah. a week. Yeah, I can't believe we lost to something that we created. That's crazy. It's like. Yeah, we're going to turn off our phones and the phone's going to go, 
oh, I don't feel like being turned off right yeah. now. And you go, I'm sorry? Yeah. And then, deesh, deesh. Oh, rabbit punch? Yeah. My iPhone? <laughs> yeah. That's not even legal. And then, uh, you I don't know, even have that what, app, bro. That's what scares me. Yeah, I'm, I don't know, but whatever. Um, we got a question that came in right here from oh, somebody. Yeah. Here's a guy. This right is like here. The, all Beautiful. the same guy three times in a row. <laughs> Val. David hey, Vaughn, what up, guys? Hey, man, I got a question for Mr. Dirt himself. Yeah. Uh, what's up with the Joe Dirt 3, dude? Those with Theo Vaughn in the picture. Bring back oh, Brandy. Whoop. Brandy. Brown. Uh, Brandy. Kid Rock. Come Ever on. Everyone Let's has go. the same reaction uh, to Brandy. Wing. I know. Snakes huh? and sparklers. What's, is this question what's up, still dude? going? Um, snakes and sparklers. Why did JD three? Uh, JD3. Yeah, yeah. Brandy was Love so it. hot. Brandy was such a stunner, man. God, oh, God. she still is. I, I yeah. see her here and there. She's unreal. Uh, she was half the reason that movie's so good. Is perfect casting. Yeah, she was great. Uh, Kid Rock was great in yeah. that. Um, he's great. He's got a new song out too. He's got a new album out. He's got a dope new song out though. I know he's so ridiculous. I go, I go. You're such a nice guy. Why do you constantly make people get mad at you? You yeah. just you you step in your own shit all the time because I love it. He can't help it. And yeah. he loves it. Yeah, he loves to just be himself. I, I get envious sometimes. He gets to just be exactly who he wants well, to he be. Has, I mean, we I try. Mean, I guess tries. No, when you have no bosses, you can go out there and just do whatever you want. And you, that used to be the way it was. You used to be able to have opinions and you could say what you wanted. And everyone's terrified. I'm terrified. Everyone's terrified. Just don't even say anything. And then, and then, that, and then yeah. suddenly silence is violence. I'm like, well, you can't get me on every turn. Like, I'm not saying something <laughs> stupid. And they go, please say something so I can 100% dissect it and shit all over you. I know. And it's horrible. Oh, but, it's horrible out there. It's but, a horrible place. It's it's a it's a horrible time for free speech in a weird way. But it's a time when we kind of need it more than ever in, in a weird way. It just has to be that you got to say it and stand behind it. Yeah, you know I, that's not me. But uh, this guy Joe Dirt Three. So we did Joe Dirt Two and Joe Dirt in Covington. In Covington, Louisiana. That's from. right, boy. Did you know we were there doing anything? Are you here? Any Did, here's the crazy thing, and this is the this Unreal. is a good thing, and why it's such a secret, beautiful little place. Never heard of. Never. Oh my god. Never heard a word. You. By were the way, in. just in a related story, did you ever have a rat tail? Oh yeah. Where it's just a little pin going straight down the back. It's just a little yeah. thin one, like a sparkler down. And the we used to put that little like kind of. Uh, they'd put a little ribbon in it. You know? Ooh, if you were girl. dating a girl, a lot of times she'd tie a little ribbon on the end. Of oh, it. like you're taken? Yeah. Sick. This, this rat's mine, huh? Just roll up to Sonic. Yeah. The only cheese he's eating is over here. <laughs> oh, you're like, little... so cheese is your pussy? She's like, oh, yeah, I didn't really think that one through. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But it's Gouda. Joder. Oh, it's pretty Gouda. It's pretty Gouda. Uh, Joder 3. I would rather do Joder animated cartoon. I yeah. talked to somebody about that recently because then you can just be crazy. Because my voice is about the same, but I don't want to be too old, strapping the wig on and being like, "What's crappening?" Yeah, you know. But I love, I love the movie. I love. First of all, I freely admit it wasn't a huge hit. Um, there was bigger hits out there. I did, but just to have one stay in the world for all this time and number one thing I get asked about. So to have something sort of stick around and, and where I was like a, a decent person, usually I'm real sarcastic, but it was like a good guy. A lot of people related to it. Yeah. A lot of people get picked on. It was very pro the South because the South can sniff out when you're making fun of them. Yeah. And I wasn't. I was saying this is cool and everything down there is cool and there's a couple of bad guys, but this guy's a good guy just trying to get through fucking life. So people sort of took it as like, that's inspirational in a weird way, which is for saying a, a movie that's kind of a goofy movie, but it did have, that was the oh, yeah. through line. So that's why I think it hit with people. And um, I don't want to mess that up, but it is fun to do Joe Dirt stuff. Snakes and Sparklers come up every 4th of July and I sell some Joe Dirt shit on my website. You know, it, it's fun because you got to keep it alive. It's fun. Yeah. Was there ever a movie character that you got asked to do that you wish you had done or one that never panned out that seemed like it was going to be really sweet? Sometimes you'll kind of tell me about different scripts and stuff. Well, like, sometimes I, I, it's not really like I turned down big ones that were uh, that turned out to be super huge. But there's some I read. I, I I just don't have like if they told me right now we're gonna go do a movie in uh, you know Europe for six months, I probably wouldn't. At this point in my life, unless I loved it so much, it just just for the idea of like oh I'm in a movie and it might be you know I like to act and I like to that, but I like to also do my own shit. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes 
to do other people's stuff later in life unless it's really good. And I'm not always getting the, the top tier best shit. So Sandler gets good stuff. I mean, he gets great directors. I see why he keeps working. He, he gets that. And if he just points at it, they make it. There's, I mean, it's a power trip. You just go, hey, I like this one. And then big directors go, you want to work. So I, I kind of try to put my own stuff together. And uh, and then, then it's, it's, it's more fun and you get more invested. And if you got a little bit of money, you don't have to work that hard. I, I don't mind working hard. I just yeah, you get to make your own choices. At a certain yeah. point, you kind of get to pick and choose. You don't have to take. And stand up's kind of fun. Get, I mean, yeah. you go on the road. I've had a blast <clears throat> in this like theater tour we're doing, and, and because you're responsible for everything. So everything you do, if you do a good show, it's your it's because of you. Yeah. And you're not compromising. You're not running everything by one. You can do a weird joke that night. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, it is real relaxed. It's real, it is real comfortable. I can't believe you just got in and started doing theaters recently, man. You were doing all this. I clubs. know, I didn't. And then, you know, when I did my special, that comes out April 26th. So the special was, and then I got to get out of here. But it might be today. Oh, yeah. I don't even look at the calendar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the special, I don't know if I told you, we were going to do it in Austin. And Netflix said, uh, you know, there's rules because of COVID. I call it Corona, yeah, old school. Oh. But uh, they they said you know Austin won't go along with that. The yeah, the, the theater, and I said I get it. They have their own rules, but so it was going to get shelved for six months. And I go, well, I have another show the weekend after. Luckily, I'm on kind of a tour. I said Minnesota, good comedy town. I can add a show if this theater will do it. And they said, yeah, we'll do it. So we added a show, filled them both up, went in there, and I I didn't think I played Minnesota for I don't know how many years maybe once in my life, went in and then my opener was on and I was like, God, it's not killing. I mm. go, this might be a tough crowd and that's the worst scenario. The night before I was in Omaha, it was a blast. Yeah, And I'm like, but the one they tape? And so I do my set, it starts out a little slow and then I, I get rolling. But then afterwards, uh, Bobby, the guy with me goes, oh, did you see they have masks on? I go, oh, they did, fuck. And he goes, not just masks. They give them N95s. No. And there's, that's like you're doing drywall. drywall. Yeah. So you're like this. <sighs> and then you can't hear anything until once in a while they go like this. <laughs> they take it off to fucking live. And then and then I go, use that noise. <laughs> we'll count that as a loud. So I do a joke in here. <laughs> so that was hard. But I said, I don't want to sweeten it and make it, uh, you know, like fake laughs. So just take the laughs put them up five percent and if it doesn't sound like there's big laughs oh, it was yeah. pretty good shows the second show was better but i go it's there it you're just looking at the jokes anyway and uh and it, they were a great crowd it just they couldn't be as great as they were right oh it's insane with the mask cut off half the noise but i think it's i watched it we just we put some clips out so i think it's gonna be a fucking blast to have one i've never done one for netflix and my last one was comedy central so this one's really the one hopefully people will see yeah but I offend people on it. Yeah, good. And after the fucking Oscars, you're like, I'm not taking anything out, but I was like, oh, you know. Fuck them. You're like, what is this wave? Like, one day you're like, you should be as ballsy as you can. And then a, a month later, they're like, everyone should be really, it's like when you do movies. I would do a movie and they go, the hangover, we need a hard R. And right before you head it in, they go, Mall Cop came out, we need a PG movie. And you're handing it in a hard R. And they're yeah. like, this isn't really what's cool right now. And I go, quit chasing the last one that worked. I know. Hangover was during PG and then they made it and they go, oh, that's cool now. So get ballsy and just make whatever's good. There's not as much balls in it anymore. Mm -hmm. The balls have been gone. This place has been neutered. Me and you are writing you one, know? it's funny. This has been spayed. Yeah, we're writing, we're Me writing one. Me and Theo are writing one, everyone, so fucking buckle up. Yeah, get your fucking dicks out. All right, any more questions on there or I gotta go? Um, I think we're probably good. Anything else exciting that came in? Oh, what about that one gentleman came in in the blue shirt? Do you have him? My hair look cool. I'm wearing question. green, dude. Huh? You look healthy. You look and you look lucky too. Yeah, I think with the green. Yeah, green's a tough one to pull off. But yeah, look at this dude. What's up, boss? Yo, Theo, it's your boy Cam checking in from Charlotte, fool. <laughs> I got a question for my boy Man, David. Baby. Though, what's the craziest thing you've seen happen on set for what movie you've been playing? In? Any crazy stories? Any? Anybody fighting and anybody get shot at or something like that. <laughs> yeah, let us know though. Theo, I rock with you. Gang gang. Gang gang, like baby. Thanks, dude. Cam. Gang, baby. That's the one right there. Cam, bro. Uh, Do you cool. yeah, any shootings, anything violent happen? Sets are pretty tame. Uh any fires, any No. 
Oh, this is the worst answer. On Grown Ups, it was raining so hard. It rained almost every single day of the whole movie, and it's supposed to be a fun summer movie. Yeah. And it was flooding base camp, you know? And I'm like, isn't this the fun? And they go, one day it's sunny, they go, get a helicopter out and get like shots, like drone shots of going over and making it look beautiful. And I go, God damn, I see the movie. I go, it looks great. I don't know how they do it. Wow. Like, it looks sunny and fun. And we're at the water park, and it's, you know, 100 degrees. and. 90% humidity. I have a wig in Groms. This is a big story, I'll tell you. I have a wig in Groms, and no one even knows that. What happened was um, when we were doing the camera testing, Sandler's like, all right, you're this guy, this guy. And I go, I'm going to be like the single guy still. I got a guy from high school like that. He's still got long hairs in the 80s. He, he hasn't like grown up, you know? Okay. And I said, if I'm the single guy, maybe I'll be like him. So I go get this blonde wig make it i look like i'm the guy from sticks you know or something it's down here yeah and uh and then i go to the camera test everyone thinks it's funny and then sandler goes i want you to be better looking this looks kind of stupid i go all right so that we shorten it by the way it's so hot already i'm in boston which plays into this story so then they cut it and then i come back from the trailer we film it again he's looking he goes ah shorter I'm like, shit. So we basically get it right where it is, you know, maybe an inch longer. He goes, just do that. It looks good. And I go, I'm going to put a little rat tail fucking, yeah. what did I put in the back? Oh, ponytail. Oh, like yeah. in the top. Almost no one sees it. It's on TikTok sometimes. Yeah. People figure it out. But I put this, I go, put this little ponytail in it. And, I, and they go, all right, well, you can just use your real hair. And I go, how about I just use this? And they go, oh, and they go, it'll take an hour out of your call time every morning. And I said, I could just put this on like a hat. They just put a bread in your hair, put that on, and I go, I have a hat. So I put one in a hat sewn into the wig. So it's just all one thing. Oh, nice. So sometimes I had a hat on. And, and it took an hour less each day? Yeah. Wow. So And I have to drive an hour to the set. So I go, oh, I get an extra juicy fucking hour. And no one even fucking knows exactly my hair. So I go, oh, this is perfect. Yeah. And then when people found out, they go, <laughs> Fuck you. Could I do that? And I go, no way, dude. No way, dude. And girls do it. I think Julia Roberts said she did it once in a movie. She just made her wig over exactly her hair. Oh. She put it on. It's a pain in the ass, but I like the Joe Dirt wig. I like, I like wearing wigs. I don't want to fuck with it. Do you have the Joe Dirt wig at home? I do. You ever put, have you ever put it on still every now and then? I have the Joe Dirt wig that I wear. You gotta let me put it on sometime. You have it. Do you on. ever put it on? <laughs> I know, but I want that original, baby. I have, you know what? I have Farley's coat from Tommy Boy. His oh. family gave me this. It's like that checkered one's on the poster. Yeah. That's so cool. I have that downstairs and uh, my wig. I have a lot of stuff from old movies. Dickie Roberts, Bench Warmers. I love Bench Warmers. That was a funny one. Anything uh, interesting happened in Covington that you remember while you was there? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I didn't. I only reason I didn't stay there is because... I had to go over that fucking bridge. Da, 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 da. It's like oh, a yeah, hour causeway. bridge. Yeah. And uh, Covington was beautiful. And they kept saying, was it John Goodman? Someone lives over there. John Goodman allegedly lived up there once. They or told me that every <laughs> fucking day of my life. And they go, John Goodman, you might come by one. Everyone get ready. I'm like, he's not even there. Like, it's a fake story. And then, but Covington was great. But the, the hotels are smaller because it's like a little town. Yeah. But we went to shoot there and people would come over and knew me. And so I thought, oh, I don't know if I can stay here because they'll just wait in the lobby, you know? Yeah. So I stayed back in town. At the Ritz. It, yeah, where it's safe. I literally go, hey, I'm going to go to McDonald's. And the guy goes, I wouldn't go to that one. I go, it's 20 feet away. He goes, yeah, I wouldn't go to the right. He goes, just go that way. And I go, what's the right? And he goes, do you want to get gunned down? I go, what the fuck? <laughs> This is the Ritz. They go, yeah, they don't put that in the brochure. I go, yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> so, yeah, you I, want yeah. a big funeral, dude? Go yeah. fucking get that. <laughs> exactly. Bitch, so I was just walked out in fear. Wow. Uh, but it, but is you know New Orleans a good place? Yeah. All good. All right. Well, well it's thanks nice for to meet blessing you. our yeah. hometown, man. Nice to meet you too, dude. David Spade, thank you so much for your time. And you guys go check out his new special on Netflix right now. Um, or very soon. Gang. It's called Nothing Personal. Yeah. That's a good title because. It is nothing personal. I make fun of people. But you know, the, the truth is, everyone gets pissed about all this shit. Yeah. I make fun of myself more. So yeah. I'm not canceling me. So they shouldn't, right? What if you just canceled yourself? That's the best way to do it. Oh, that's a good idea. Beat anyone to it. I'm done. What the fuck did you say about yeah. me? <laughs> and then I say, you said you were a little shrimp cocktail. I think it's offensive. And I think that's it for you. Yeah. And then I take myself out of it, you know? 
and then I unretire. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's backwards, baby. It's forwards. David Spade, thanks so much, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, let's do it again in a couple years. Okay, cool. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake and let myself all my shine.